Okay, so anybody know anything interesting about Pascal's triangle? Yes, it looks like a triangle. triangle. <laughs> well, I've arranged it in a triangle. Um, it helps to the see the path. Ones Sorry. are all on the outside. Ones are all on the outside, definitely. Uh, any other patterns? It, it goes Just from one to eight on a symmetrical. One to eight, yeah, that's not a bad thing we should point out. So what you can see here is that it goes uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's symmetrical. It would keep going all the way down, nine, 10, 11, 12. Symmetric, what do you mean by symmetric? Uh, the numbers are the same on each side. Yeah, good. So for now, I'm just going to temporarily go like this. Okay. And if you look on one side against the other, for example, you have one, five, 10. 1, 5, 10. So it's kind of like a mirror image. Yes, Joy? Can you go down diagonally, like, say, like, the third row? And then 1 plus 2 equals 3, 2 plus 3 equals 4, 3 plus 4 equals 5. So 1 plus 2 so equals... The, the, um, like, when you go down diagonally, it's like Can 1, 3, 6, 10 plus 2, 10. Oh, 1, 3, 6, 10. Okay. What about it? Okay, so this is plus 2, plus 3, plus 4. That's not bad. I like that. So that's plus 2, plus 3, plus 4. Anything else? 3 plus 6. <laughs> okay, well, um, I can show you a couple other patterns that I've noticed in here. Um, I call this one the hockey stick pattern. You can find lots of hockey sticks in here. Maybe we shouldn't talk hockey right now as the Canucks are, are out of it. Um. But yeah. if you uh, make a hockey stick, 1 plus 3 plus 6 equals 10. Can anybody else see uh, anything else? Two, three, six. Well, yeah, there's lots of hockey sticks uh, all over it. But um, other than hockey stick pattern, can you see any other patterns? Serpinski's gasket. Ah, cheater. <laughs> that, well, what is Serpinski's gasket? I don't Maybe know. You can explain it. <laughs> um, but uh, here's another one. Let's take a look at the rows, okay? So I'm going to write up the, uh, the total. 2 to the power of n minus 1. You're suspended from talking for a while. <laughs> if you add up these rows, for example, 1, 1 plus 1, 1 plus 2 plus 1, you keep getting powers of 2. So that's one pattern that we'll see how that's helpful. Um, adding up powers of two for every row in Pascal's triangle. Um, anything else? There's lots more. Uh, there's Fibonacci's tons of patterns. Numbers. Sorry? Fibonacci's numbers. Yes, Fibonacci's numbers are in there. Um, I'll, uh, I'll show you Fibonacci's numbers. You have to go diagonally. So here's what you do to get Fibonacci's numbers. The first number is one. Um, I'm going to keep adding up the numbers I hit when I go diagonally. So there's 1. This time I hit 1 and 1, which is 2. This time I hit 1 and 2, which is 3. This time I hit 1, 3, 1, which is 5. Then I hit 1, 4, 3, 1, which is 8. And the next one, just we'll stop there, 1, 5, 6, 1, which is 13. And we keep going, 21, and so on. Uh, those are Fibonacci's numbers when you go down those diagonals. Um, what I've if you seen go down a row. What do you mean? What if you go down a row? Like one, two, six, twenty-seven. One, two. Oh, one, two, six, twenty, seventy. Uh, I don't know. I've never thought about that one. So that'd be nine, twenty-nine, seventy-nine. I don't know. I'm sure there's a pattern in there. Um, but uh, the last one I'll show you that I know of is some of the powers of eleven are in here. For example, this is eleven to the zero, eleven to the one. 11 squared, 11 cubed. Uh, I don't know how far it goes. I don't think it works much further than that. But uh, anyways, there's a lot of patterns in Pascal's triangle. Anybody know where it came from? Or where at least legend has it that Pascal's triangle came from? Pascal. <laughs> Good. No wonder you're all in the honors group. Um, Pascal's triangle, is, the story loosely goes like this. Okay, Pascal is hanging out with Fermat, because that's what mathematicians do on the weekend. Okay. Um, but seriously, they, they actually were together, um, and they were playing a game where there was a wager involved, okay? Now, the wager in the game was whoever won got the full wager, okay? But in the middle of this game, uh, 
Pascal's delivered some terrible news. He needs to come home right away. So they have to leave in the middle of this game. But the problem of settling the wager is there. How do we figure out who wins, even if we stop the game right in the middle? Right? So it's kind of like if the Canucks were playing Chicago and it was like, say it was only 2-1 at the time. Right? It wasn't devastatingly 5-1. Uh, and, uh, you know, the power went out at GM place and they had to stop the game, right? What would they do? Would they just bring everybody back and say, okay, put a penny on the floor where you were so that you can start the game exactly as you were? Um, or do you think they would just say, well, it's 2-1, Chicago wins, we have to call the game? Or how do you think they would play out the game after if you stopped it in the middle? Um, I believe one such incident actually happened like this, and it was in hockey. I believe there was a pretty bad injury to the game, and the, and the game was called. So they basically just said, uh, we're not going to continue the hockey game. Um, but I wish I remembered what they did and the end of it was. It might be interesting to look it up. So um, anyways, Pascal has this wager with Fermat, and they have to figure out how to split it up. So once Pascal goes home and he tends to his business, they start corresponding through letters, trying to figure out how do we split up the winnings in the middle of the game. Okay, we, game didn't end. We don't know who gets the winnings. So in doing so, uh, they basically built what the Western world's introduction to probability was. Um, so not that we hadn't thought of games of chance before, but this is the first time that somebody formally looked at probabilities. And these numbers here, you might not recognize them, but for example, if I wanted to know how many ways can I select two objects out of five when order doesn't matter, we've been calling those combinations, right? So here's five, choose two, is ten. Okay, so the tricky thing about Pascal's triangle is you got to remember counting numbers start at zero, right? How many ways can you select zero objects? Then one, two, three. So this is five choose zero, five choose one, five choose two, five choose three, five choose four, and five choose all five. So if you don't have a calculator, you have to think of a better way to come up with uh, your counting numbers. But we can come up with counting numbers pretty easily just by doing simple additions. And that's the way math had to be done in those days, was they had big tables of, to look up values. So they didn't have calculators. So Pascal's triangle gave us the counting numbers, and then that's some of the basis we do for probability. Okay, so let's see how some of these connect to uh, our counting problems. So how is that five choose, like one, five choose two? Just a second, my computer's frozen. Okay. <laughs> So um, the first pattern that we should observe is um, the symmetric one. So uh, I think Joy or Andrew, one of you guys mentioned that. So here's the funny thing about math and psychology, right? Psychology, can your, your instincts can lead you astray sometimes. So let's pretend that we went and we asked Joe Blow and we said, okay, instead of playing the uh, 649, we're going to devise a new lottery called 4349. You have to pick 43 numbers out of the 49. Uh, what do you think that the average person on the street would say? What do you think they would say? What would there be their preference? Hell yeah. Why would they? You, so you mean they like they like this game better? Yeah. Why? Because you get a higher higher chance of getting um, like winning. Why a higher chance of winning? Because there's less numbers that would be, or there are more numbers that are picked. So, so you get to pick more numbers. Yeah. Okay, so people feel like, oh, you know what, this game is better, 43 numbers, because I get to pick more, so I'm more likely to come up with numbers, you know, that they draw out of the hat in the lottery, right? So they might draw, you know, if you get to pick 43 numbers, the odds that you have one number is higher, yes. But uh, what about, uh, you know, why might somebody say, oh, this is a terrible game, I wouldn't want to play this game? Because I've heard people tell me this too. Any ideas why this might be a terrible game to play? Because it will be close to impossible to get the uh, jackpot. jackpot. So other people would be saying like, wow, but this is an awful game because to win, I need to pick all 43 numbers correctly. And they're like, man, that's terrible. What's That'd the odds a, of me doing that? It better be a big jackpot. <laughs> yeah, it better be a big jackpot. Like but the reality is uh, there is exactly as many lottery tickets with 4349 as 649. Why is that? Because there's six not used. Exactly. The six which are not used, that's the lottery ticket for 649. The 43 that you picked, that's the 4349. So just to show you quickly, let's just say I had a simpler lottery. Okay, my, my lottery game is uh, going to be called 3-8. You pick three numbers of the eight. So say I picked six, seven, and eight. 
that would mean that these are the numbers I picked. There's another lottery ticket that corresponds exactly to the one I picked, which is five numbers of the eight. It's the ones I didn't pick. So you can check in the calculator that 49 choose 43, it's actually equal to 49 choose 6. That's the part in Pascal's triangle because they're symmetric. It's um, 49 minus 43 is 6, so these two are going to be equal in uh, number.